नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत सबुद्ध नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत सबुद्धस् नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत सबुद्धस् मे आई गेट द पर्मिशन फ्रॉम महासंग एंड डियर धम्म फ्रेंड्स दिस इज द फर्स्ट टाइम आई आई एम डूइंग धम्म डिस्कोर्स to this uh, audience and i'm really happy to have this uh, opportunity uh, on behalf of propagating dhamma to a new dhamma audience and um, i was invited by mr sumin then mr tarak uh, to do a, a dhamma discourse on monthly basis so we are uh, we are planning to do these kind of dhamma discourses once in a month by me so i would like to thank mr suminda and mr tharaka for the invitation and for their effort and their for for their coordination uh, for this dhamma discourse so today we are going to uh, uh, discuss or having the dhamma discourse about the virtue and about the concentration what the what is the interrelation between uh, virtue and the concentration and uh, what is concentration what is the importance of the concentration and these kind of things we are going to discuss today within dham within this uh, dhamma discourse so uh, as the commencement of the dhamma talk we should have a understanding about the virtue what is the morality so virtue what is the importance of the virtue for us our natural ways we are uh, tend to do akusalas what are those akusalas we are doing by our uh, bodily actions or by our verbal actions sometimes we do uh, uh, akusalas unwholesome deeds like uh, killing stealing and sometimes uh, sexual misconduct or using uh, uh, intoxicating substances these kind of things uh, sometimes uh, people are doing by their body and sometimes uh, they do naturally by their words like telling lies and uh, having vain talks harsh words and uh, like uh, these kind of things they are doing uh, by their word these all are akusalas whether it is done by uh, body or whether it is done by word they are akusalas naturally people tend to the, uh, do these uh, bad deeds unwholesome uh, actions by the word or by the body so when we are doing these kind of uh, uh, physical bad things and verbal bad things we are within the spear of akusalas so when the when we are engaged when we are engaged with these uh, unwholesome acts our mind is also polluted by the defilements because we are with the akusala we are with the defilements so our mind will be polluted because and the other things the bad thing is uh, after having these uh akusalas we will be having bad results or the bad things as the return within this life for uh, in the uh, upcoming lives in our sansara so uh, the first thing is when we are doing these bad deeds our mind will be polluted our uh, bodily actions and the verbal actions are polluted and the the worst thing is we will be having uh bad results uh because of this unwholesome acts unwholesome deeds so the first thing we have to do is we have to refrain uh from these bad deeds unwholesome acts that's why we need a like code of conduct or a moral conduct uh to refrain from these bad things akusalas so that is the first thing what we have to do uh because uh, if we are engaged continuously with these bad deeds 
we cannot develop our uh, virtual uh, we cannot uh, develop our moral virtue or we cannot go for the higher results in this practice so the first things we have to refrain from them that is why we need a virtue moral virtue or the moral conduct so uh, that is the reason for the, the that, that, that is the necessity of having a moral virtue so the thing is so these kind of uh, uh, by having a moral virtue we can start this practice because uh, this is the basic element or the foundation for this practice otherwise we will not be secured in the path we are not uh, like stable in this practice within this practice the seal or the moral virtue or the morality it is the basic thing or the foundation for the practice so uh, we have to develop uh, as a beginner we have to develop this moral virtue we have to observe the precepts as per our status because uh, a lay person might be having the five precepts or the eight precepts sometimes uh, occasionally they observe 10 precepts and the novices will be having uh, 10 precepts dedicated for them and the monks the bhikkhus will be having the the greatest uh, moral virtue or the moral conduct uh, in this world uh, what is what can be uh, what can be uh, what can be uh, observed as a uh, like a worldly being so uh, because uh, based on the situation based of the character uh, we can decide what kind of a moral conduct uh, we can observe so having observed we can then uh, like uh, en encourage ourselves to protect that so in the as a beginner you may encounter some difficulties sometimes you may feel that it is too difficult to uh, protect these kind of a moral conduct these kind of precepts sometimes it is you have to put much effort to protect these kind of moral conduct but anyhow you have to protect them sometimes uh, the precepts will be broken easily in the early stage of the developing so but you have to observe again and again and try to uh, like strength strengthen your uh, the uh, sila or the mor morality and you have to uh, like uh, increase the time period you can stay you can spend with the moral conduct without breaking the precepts so then you can develop the morality then without having this foundation because i have mentioned this uh, morality or the uh, moral virtue is the basement of this uh, practice so we have a, a long journey to go until we achieve the nibbana so as a disciple as a, a buddhist as a true disciple uh, we all have that uh, objective ultimate objective to achieve the nibbana the ultimate uh, liberation so to achieve that ultimate liberations we li liberation we have to uh, achieve we have to generate the noble paths that is the way to eliminate to eradicate all the defilements within uh, our mind so uh, for that we uh, to generate these noble paths we have to follow a long journey we have to do so many things we have to put much effort to develop this practice to develop certain uh, levels of this practice so any uh, anyway uh, the beginning stage or the foundation the first step the first level is the morality without having the morality you cannot expect the higher stages higher levels or the higher results of this practice uh, sometimes you can go to uh, some extent without having a uh, purified morality without having the purification of the uh, morality or the virtue you can go uh, up to some level to some extent but it, you are not secured in the path you are not secured in the practice sometimes uh, a small defilement or a, 
a single defilement can destroy all the results you have gained within the practice with a long period, with, with, uh, with a much effort. So, uh, that is why you should have a very strong foundation with your sila, with your morality. Let us take an example uh, like building, uh, uh, like a high rise building. So, when you uh, construct this kind of a building, you should have a, a proper or a strong foundation in order to go for uh, several stories, several le uh, levels, like multiple uh, floors. Sometimes it may contain like 50, 100 uh, stories. To have those kind of levels, you should have a, a very strong foundation. Without having a strong foundation, sometimes you can develop some, some sometimes you can uh, construct a certain level of uh, flows, stories. But uh, when you go up to some uh, uh, like uh, level, sometimes you may feel the trembling or sometimes it, it will be collapsed uh, with a certain stage. So likewise, without having uh, a purified without having the purification of the moral virtue, you can develop the practice. It can be happen. Sometimes you may achieve some, uh, some results, some higher results within the practice. But uh, after going to certain extent, certain level, you may feel uh, that means you are not stable, you are not secure. Then sometimes, uh, uh, the defilements will destroy all the results what you have gained or some of the results then it will be a like a fail you will lose uh, you will lose all the uh, like results what you have gained so that is why the buddha is admonishing to have a strong or a purified uh, moral virtue uh, before you go for the higher levels so that is the importance of the sila so, what is done by sila? Because sometimes uh, we can feel, because we know in our, uh, like uh, within ourselves, we know there are uh, several tendencies, we call the latent tendencies, anusya. So, uh, sometimes we cannot even recognize that these kind of uh, latent tendencies, the defile, the stage, uh, a certain level of uh, stage, of the defilements, they are like hidden stage. So these latent uh, tendencies, anusayas, uh, within ourselves, sometimes uh, by dealing with the objects, they come to the surface of the mind. That means the arising stage of the uh, kilesa, of the defilements. We call the uh, pariuttana. We call the pariuttana because we are dealing with the mind because they have arisen in the mind. They have come to the uh, surface of the mind. So, after having these kind of defilements in the surface, in the mind, sometimes you will go to the, uh, sometimes you may go to the uh, transgressing stage. That means that uh, you are doing something, you are expressing that uh, defilement by your body or by your word. You will do some action, the bad actions. You may kill someone, you may, you may steal something, uh, you may uh, sometimes by your word, you may, uh, you may tell lies, you may tell some harsh words. These kind of things will have happen. We call the transgressing stage. We call the vitikkama. vitikkama. So, uh, when it comes to the, because earlier it was in the latent tendency level, the anusaya level, and it came to the surface of the mind, that the arising stage, the pariyuttana, and uh, after having the pariyuttana level, then it will be expressed. Uh, it will come out by your bodily action or the verbal actions. Uh, then uh, you have done some powerful akusalas by your word or by your body. That is, uh, that is uh, suppressed or that is eliminated by having a virtue because sometimes you may you may feel that defilements are working in your mind because they are coming to the arising stage, they are coming to the pariyuttana. But if you are a virtuous person, if you have a, a moral uh, a virtue, or moral conduct, if you have observed some precepts, uh, you know that 
for you it is not suitable to have these kind of things by your body or by your word then you try to uh, maintain the discipline within yourself because you are a virtuous person then you will be suppressing these kind of akusalas unwholesome deeds by your body or by, by your action by your word uh, that is the importance of the sila so uh, and that is the behavior of the sila but it is not a uh, like a great cause to eliminate the defilements to come to the arising stage to the pariuttana level because we cannot expect that level uh, by just having the sila by just having the sila you cannot expect to eliminate these defilements at least uh, uh, for a certain period of time uh, after like blocking these defilements to come to the arising stage the coming to the surface of the mind so sometimes uh, even though you are a virtuous person you may struggle uh, with the defilements because they are time to time they are coming to the surface of the mind because you will feel the that pariuttana level because we are not expecting to eliminate that stage we are eliminate we are suppressing your bodily akusalas or the world uh, the verbal akusalas so that is the main objective of having sila then uh, by have by uh, like uh, having this kind of a discipline then uh, you like try to develop that sila and after having the like purification level of sila you try to develop the next level you should uh, try to go for the next step so for that you should have a proper understanding about this practice because sometimes the as the uh, true disciple you should uh, have that objective the ultimate objective to achieve that ultimate nibbana the ultimate liberation to achieve that ultimate liberation you should generate these four maggas uh, because these uh, certain levels you have to uh, generate within yourself for that you have to do vipassana Uh, to do to do the the doing the vipassana is not a very easy thing it will take time you have to put much effort uh, and sometimes you need some concentration to do the vipassana and uh, for do this samatha and vipassana and the to develop the concentration you you need the uh, like uh, purification level of the morality that is the thing that is the like uh, behavior of this practice so you have to uh, understand the the progressive levels progressive levels of this practice because as a true disciples you have to uh, you have to like you, you you have to try to achieve these kind of levels these kind of results uh, by not just focusing on the sila you need the uh, morality yes it's true because without having a proper Uh, purification of the morality you cannot go for the higher levels but anyhow as a true disciple uh, true disciples as a, a buddhist uh, you have to achieve you have to go for the 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 upcoming levels the higher levels in this practice otherwise you will not achieve the results of this uh, practice as buddha admonished so you have to understand that because you should not like uh, limited to morality like you are entire life just focusing on the morality just protecting the sila is not enough as a true disciple you have to like uh, try you have to uh, try to achieve the higher levels so in order to uh, have that understanding you should have the correct understanding about this progressive path because this path or the, this practice is progressive as uh, buddha buddha's admonishment this path or the practice is progressive the improvements are also progressive and the like uh, the results are also progressive you have to learn about them what are the progressive levels of this practice in order to achieve the higher levels you have to follow the path uh, correctly with the correct advices you should have the understanding about the sphere of uh, morality to which level i should improve my morality 
to uh, to which level to which extent should i focus on this morality and when i have the eligibility to go forward to go for the next level so that is uh, that should be understood by having the proper understanding about this progressive path because as per the buddha's admonishments buddha himself uh, classified this path into several uh, segments or the several categories several levels the the most the foremost uh, categorization or the classification is the uh, sapta visuddhi we call the sevenfold purification path the, the there are seven levels this is done by the buddha this uh, classification is done by the buddha what is the first path is uh, we call the sila parisud sila visuddhi uh, that is the purification of the moral virtue that is the first level and we have the second level the purification of the mind we call the chitta visuddhi and the third level is the ditti visuddhi uh, we call the purification uh, of the weaves and the fourth level is kanka vitarana visuddhi the purification of overcoming the doubts and the fifth one is magga magga jnana dasana visuddhi the purification by uh, knowledge and vision uh, about what is the path and what is not the path and the sixth level is patipada jnana dasana visuddhi that is the purification by uh, knowledge and the vision uh, about the path and the, the last seventh level segment is the jnana dasana visuddhi that is the the purification of the vision knowledge and the vision these are the seven path divided by the buddha himself so uh, within these seven paths there is a progressive levels you have to follow the uh, one path and you have to go for the second you have to go for the third likewise you have to follow this path you cannot jump into here and there because you have to follow uh, as per the Uh, like flow you have to follow this one this is what we call the progressive practice and very easy to understand if you go for, uh, if you uh, try to understand if you try to learn about them uh, it is very easy to understand what are those segments and what are because within those segments there are sub uh, classification sub segments you can we can uh, talk about them later but uh, the foremost step is the sila visuddhi that is a purification of the morality that purification of the morality is the result of having the sila so that is the the first level and the foremost level without having this uh, sila visuddhi the purification of, of the moral virtue you cannot go for the uh, higher is higher levels because as i said uh, earlier you can go you can have some uh, levels some results of the uh, higher Uh, levels but even though you have uh, achieved some results it would not be secure it would not be stable because uh, you are first the foremost level is the your foundation is not stable you, your foundation is not strong so that is why the buddha, buddha is admonishing to have that first stage strong so you should have a very strong foundation with the sila this is the sila visuddhi uh, but it is out of the seven segments this is only the first one if someone is just focusing on the uh, sila visuddhi or the purification of the moral virtue it is not enough you have uh, higher segments to achieve you have to come to those stages one by one and to achieve the ultimate liberation if you if someone is just focusing on the sila visuddhi by just protecting the precepts by just protecting the uh, the moral conduct it is not enough because you are losing you will not have you will not experience the high results you will not achieve the ultimate uh, the noble results uh, within this sasan so uh, the first level is sila visuddhi the purification of the moral virtue you have to uh, like you have to put much effort to achieve that to uh, like pass that stage to achieve the results of that stage uh the in the as a beginner in the early stage you may feel it is uh, too difficult to uh, 
protect this kind of a sila. You are like uh, struggling with the precepts because sometimes easily they might be broken by yourself. Then you have to observe again and again because if you are like observing them again and again because of the uh, breaking of the precept, it is not a good level of the sila. Because you have to improve your, you have to put much effort to develop, uh, to increase that time gap uh, be, be, in between two observations. So you have to, uh, you have to put much effort to develop your uh, purification of the sila. Initial stage, you might feel that it is too difficult, but after a certain period of time, you may feel that it is somewhat easier for you. So sometimes you may, you are happy about your uh, moral conduct or the moral virtue. You are happy because you are not doing a kusala, you are engaged or you are trying to develop the kusalas within yourself, then you may uh, have some happy feeling, pleasure within yourself. And sometimes you may feel that it is not that much difficult now because it is too easy for me to uh, protect these kind of precepts. Sometimes a person can uh, develop, uh, the, the, like increase the number of precepts they uh, like observe or they can come to a higher level of the sila. So anyway, uh, by developing the sila, sometimes you may come to a like a certain level of purification of this moral virtue. So that is uh, how you can identify that you have come to a certain level of purification with regards to the, this moral virtue. Because uh, the first thing is, uh, like I said earlier, you may feel that it is somewhat easier for you to uh, protect these kind of precepts like based on your moral uh, conduct, you have observed. Sometimes, sometimes for a lay person, it may, uh, you may have the five precepts. Sometimes you may have eight precepts. Sometimes occasionally you will uh, follow, you will try to protect the 10 precepts. For a novice, it can be, uh, it should be 10 precepts. For a bhikkhu, it's a upasampada sila, that is adi sila, the, uh, the highest sila uh, within this world. So sometimes a monk may follow him, may try to protect the the, the fourfold purification of morality, that is we call the Chatuparis of the Sila. We call the Pati Mukha Sangvara Sila, that is, the, that is the refrain with regards to the moral conduct, Pati Mukha Sangvara Sila. And the second uh, level of the Indriya Sangvara Sila, that is refrain uh, about, uh, with regards to the uh, sense faculties, five senses. And the uh, Third one is the Ajiva Parishuddhi Sila, that is the purification of the livelihood. And the fourth level, fourth category is the Pache Sannisita Sila, that is the, uh, the contemplation about the four requisites by your wisdom. So for a lay person, it, uh, this fourfold purification of morality would be uh, somewhat difficult, but uh, the monks sometimes uh, they can like follow this one, they are trying to uh, protect these chatuparis of the sila. And sometimes the monks are having the osteo practices, we call the dutanga. Sometimes they are protecting several, uh, several dutangas at once, uh, osteo practices. Uh, these are the levels uh, based on the character, based on the person, the, the level of the virtue can differ. But anyhow, based on your uh, choice based on your moral conduct, what you have observed, you can develop that. Then, to after having uh, put, have, after putting much effort, after a certain period of time, you may feel that it is somewhat easier for you to protect this uh, sila or the moral virtue. Then, that is a sign that you have come to a certain level of purification with regards to the moral virtue. That is the first. Uh, sign or first uh, thing you can come to a conclusion uh, that you have uh, come to a purification level. Uh, we call the sila visuddhi. Uh, but for um, but you can develop it uh, furthermore. But anyhow, you are eligible to go for the next level. The other thing is Buddha admonished or Buddha praised about the results. What are the rewards you can? What are the benefits you can achieve by having a, a pure sila? after having a purification level of the sila or the moral virtue, you may feel some benefit, you will experience some rewards, benefits within yourself. 
The first thing is, if someone is a virtuous person, he is effortfully uh, try to uh, protect the moral virtue, the moral conduct, then he will be free from remorse. That is the first uh, result, the avipatisara. This is, you can experience within yourself, you are not regretting about your past because you have not done akusalas, you have improved the kusalas, so you, there will not be uh, a thing to regret about. So you will be free from remorses. Avipatisar, that is the first benefit. You can experience that within yourself if you have a certain level of purification with regards to the uh, moral virtue. Then the, if you have the uh, free from remorses, then you will feel the early stage of the happiness, we call the joy, the pamojja. Then uh, after having the pamojja, you, you will experience, you will feel the, the powerful or the like, strong stage of the happiness, we call the rapture, a piti. Uh, but after experiencing the piti, you feel that uh, your body is calm. Your body, you feel the pasaddi, uh, we call the serenity. You feel that the calm, you have, uh, you feel the calmness of your body and the mind. And when you experience the pasaddi, when you have the pasaddi in your body and the mind, then you will feel the sukha, we call the pleasure within your body. You can, your mind is also very calm uh, and your body will be calm and you will feel the pleasure. When you have the sukha, when you have the pleasure, then your mind tends to have the samadhi, concentration, because your mind tends to uh, be with one object for a certain period of time. That is not, you have, you have not achieved the excess concentration or the absorption levels, but because of these results, avipatisara, free from remorses, and uh, the pamojja, the joy, and the piti, the rapture, and the pasaddi, the serenity, and the sukha, the pleasure, your mind, your mind is very calm, your body is very calm, your body is comfortable, you feel that comfortable level within your body and the mind. Then your mind tends to uh, have one object for a certain period of time. Your mind is not running, you are not, your, your uh, mind is not jumping to the uh, s certain objects uh, like very frequently. So these are, these results you can experience within yourself if you are developing the resila, if you have achieved the certain level of purification uh, with regards to the moral virtue. That is also a sign that you can come to a conclusion that you have achieved uh, at least some level of the purification of, the, of your sila. Then you can design okay, I'm eligible, now I have achieved at least certain level of purification, so I'm eligible to go forward and go for the next level. What is the next level? The second level is the Chitta Visuddhi. Now we have complete, uh, now we have achieved some level of Sila Visuddhi, it is not the end, you have to develop uh, furthermore uh, you are the moral virtue, but at least you are eligible, you have come to a uh, that certain level, uh, you have achieved the eligibility to go for the next level, that Chitta Visuddhi. That is the uh, purification of the mind. Uh, this Chitta Visuddhi, we call, we are just focusing on the concentration. The first stage is dedicated for the moral virtue uh, and the second stage is dedicated for the concentration. And we should understand why there is a stage called the Chitta Visuddhi, the purification of the mind. Why we need to develop the mind, why we need to develop the concentration. And what is the concentration? Uh, so this is the, basically if we have a very simple definition, the concentration is, let's uh, consider about our natural way, our natural condition of our mind. Uh, our natural way is we are jumping from one object to another object uh, in a very fast manner. We cannot be with one object hmm, for a certain period of time, for a longer period. Because usually we are jumping, we are changing the object hmm, time to time. It means uh, at least uh, we are not hmm, spending our time at least few seconds with one object. We are moving to another object. Hmm, and we are not spending that new object for a long period and we are moving to a new one. That is happening all the time. Uh, that is the 
natural way of our mind we are taking because we have several uh, doors we have physical doors we are taking the uh, visible objects through our eye door we are taking the audible objects from our ear door likewise we sometimes we have five uh, sense faculties physical sense faculties and we have the mind door also we are taking the mental objects through our mind door through our uh, mind so uh, within these uh, after by getting those kind of objects we are moving we are jumping from one object to another uh, because uh, continuously without uh, without uh, having a gap we are jumping uh, we are running within these objects that is the natural way but what is the concentration is uh, the the skill or the ability to be with one object for a certain period it can be like a few minutes it can be half an hour uh, one hour or few hours sometimes a whole day or few days you can be with one object mm, uh, for a longer period that ability or the skill what is developed within yourself to be with uh, one object for a longer period we call the uh, we call the concentration the samadhi it has different classifications you may have the access concentration we call the upachara samadhi and we call the uh, the jhana levels the absorption levels anyway you can achieve those things by developing the uh, samadhi developing the concentration when we talk about the like abhidhamma uh, perspective we have a mental factor in our uh, mind called ekagrata one pointedness the ekag the uh, the task of the ekagrata uh, is to have one object from one perspective from one perspective uh, that is the the like the kicha or the, that is the task of that ekagrata by developing the tranquility by developing the concentration what we are doing we develop the the level of that ekagrata we we uh, develop the level of the ekagrata and uh, ekagrata can have the same object for a longer period that skill will uh, we uh, elaborate or we uh, define that is the skill or the ability to be with one object for a longer period as the concentration or the samadhi that is the uh, basic definition or the simple definition about the concentration and it would be enough to have a uh, like rough idea about the samadhi or the concentration and uh, this is the concentrate the definition and uh, we need to focus we need to understand why we need concentration and what is the interrelation between the a uh, sila the morality and the concentration uh, i have said that uh, we have that latent tendencies in our mind defilements so uh, sometimes we cannot recognize uh, because of the objects we have through our uh, faculties uh, we these defilements the latent tendencies defilements will come to the surface of the mind that means arising they will come to the arising stage but by having a virtuous life by having a moral virtue or the moral conduct we are suppressing we are eliminating those like uh, ingress, uh, transgressing stage or the vitikkamana stage by having those kind of bad deeds by your body or action but by the seal by just having the seal we cannot stop we cannot eliminate we cannot suppress these defilements by coming to the surface of the mind Uh, by coming to the ri- rising stage because paryuttana happens all the time uh, because defilements are working if uh, because of the objects based on the objects we meet we encounter these defilements come to the rising stage we call the paryuttana sila just sila cannot help to eliminate those kind of defilements coming to the rising stage so that is a drawback of the sila because Uh, we cannot uh, stop that one because it is a uh, you are st- still you are struggling with your mind because you are not doing any bad deeds by your word by your body by your actions uh, but still you are struggling with your defilements because they are coming to the surface of the mind you are dealing with your mind with those defilements but you are not doing akusalas by your uh, actions uh, 
So still you are struggling, so you need a solution for this one. That is why the concentration is helpful because concentration will helpful to uh, like suppress these uh, defilements by eliminating the that arising stage because even though they are not coming come into the surface stage surface level of the mind uh, because they are suppressed by these kind of concentration it can be upachara samadhi excess uh, concentration or the absorption level jhanas you are suppressing those kind of uh, defilements uh, by coming to the arising stage that is the benefit that is the interrelations be, interrelation between the uh, sila morality and the concentration because uh, the sila morality has some limitation they uh, it cannot help to suppress the defilements by coming to the arising stage it can only do the uh, suppressing of the vitikkaman the transgressing stage but uh, the limitations the drawbacks of the sila will be achieved by the uh, overcome by the uh, concentration because you are uh, suppressing those defilements uh, then the still now the defilements are even not come for the arising stage they are uh, in the that uh, latent tendency level at the anusaya level that is the benefit or that is the important one importance of the have of having the concentration and the interrelationship between the morality and the concentration okay now we should understand about this furthermore uh, with the practice as a disciple uh, i have mentioned that we have that uh, objective ultimate objective to achieve nibbana it can be in a different ways some uh, some uh, a, a person may uh, try to achieve that nibbana by becoming a, a samma sambuddha and someone uh, will like to have that uh, nibbana to achieve that nibbana by becoming a pachaka buddha and sometimes another person uh, will be uh, hoping he is expecting to become a, just uh, like agga savaka or maha savaka uh, these kind of uh, arahants and to achieve the nibbana sometimes just a normal arahant uh, anyway uh, your final objective ultimate objective to achieve the nibbana to achieve the nibbana you have to uh, achieve or to generate the four mangas the the four noble paths we call the sotapatti magga the path of the uh, the stream entry and the so uh, sakadagami magga the path of the once return and the anagami mag path of the non return and the arahatta mag path of the arahant these four mangas four noble or transcendental paths should be uh, generated within yourself to eradicate the defilements level by level completely permanently from your mind then you will become a arahant you can become a, a just a normal arahant and or the maha savaka or the agga savaka or the pachyaka buddha or samma sambuddha anyway you are uh, ultimate goal is to achieve the nibbana so you have to anyway you have to achieve you have to generate these uh, four noble paths within yourself that is a function about the wisdom because by, to achieve this nibbana what is the essential thing you have just having the sila you cannot generate these uh, four mangas four noble paths just having the uh, concentration you cannot achieve the, the achieve these four noble paths uh, by just having the sila and concentration uh, some uh, sila and samadhi the morality and the concentration even though you cannot achieve just having those two you cannot achieve you cannot generate these four mangas four noble paths and what is the most essential the required thing is the wisdom without developing without improving your wisdom you can never achieve these four mangas or the four noble paths then you can never achieve the ultimate liberation you will not be a arahant without uh, developing the wisdom that is the function of the wisdom the function of the morality is different function of the concentration is different Uh, without with uh, uh, by just having the functions of the morality by just having the function of the concentration you can never achieve the these higher results the higher 
noble results that is done by the function of the wisdom so without developing this wisdom you can never achieve those higher noble results so to develop the wisdom what we have to do uh, just improving sila we cannot develop the wisdom just improving the concentration we cannot develop the wisdom so to develop to improve your level of the wisdom to uh, to that you to become an eligible person to generate these four noble paths what is the most uh, important thing to to improve the wisdom that is the vipassana by doing the insight meditation by doing the vipassana bhavana by doing the insight meditation you can develop the uh, wisdom and you will be a eligible person to uh, generate these four noble paths so what is vipassana and what is why we need to develop the wisdom and how it is achieved what is vipassana because uh, usually we deal with the external world because we are dealing the external world with our five sense faculties and our mind do we are taking the objects and we are dealing with them so that is the natural way we are thinking about the world as we think but it is not the correct way because it is our mind is affected by affected by the defilements the hindrances the fetters and the cankers uh, these sometimes we call the compactnesses we call the gana we have the samuha gana that is the compactness about the grouping and the uh, santati gana compactness about the continuity and sometimes the aramana gana the compactness about getting the uh, object object objects and the we call the kicca gana we call the uh, compactness about the functionality uh, having these because uh, our mind is covered uh, with these things the four compactnesses and the defilements hindrances fetters fetters cankers uh, we are getting the effect of the of these things uh, to our mind the having the effect of these all these uh, bad things we are dealing with the world in a wrong manner it is not the correct way so we have to understand what is out there what uh, the we have to recognize the world as it is uh, is there a self what is i what is called i is there a self within i so what is, is there a world out there and what uh, how this uh, uh, what is what has happened to me in the previous uh, life and what is happening now and what is going to happen to me in the next life and how it is going to happen what are the causes and what is the world what is the self so these kind of things we have to understand we have to uh, like uh, do the analysis about these things we have to understand the world as it is in the correct way in the uh, like uh, we have to understand about ourselves we have to understand about the world in the uh, correct way so that is what we are doing by doing vipassana by developing the insight meditation we try to understand the world as it is we try to uh, we try to understand ourselves as it is we try to understand what are what are the realities uh, what are the namas what are the mentalities uh, what are the uh, that means within the nama they are uh, we call the consciousness and the mental factors chitta and chetasika and what are the rupas the materialities or the corporeality <coughs> we have to understand what are those realities what is actually out there what is self what is i what is the world so we are do, we are going to understand about these things in the real way in the real way that is done by vipassana so uh, without understanding these things without uh, having a proper understanding about uh, these things you cannot develop your wisdom Uh, developing the wisdom is under, developing your understanding about these realities about this world about yourself that is done by wisdom uh, that is done by vipassana and you have, you can develop your wisdom then only you can achieve you are eligible to uh, develop generate the four magas four noble paths then you will achieve the ultimate nibbana okay now by uh, to do the vipassana you have to do a very a huge task that means uh, you have to do it it is not a not an easy task 
So you have to put more effort. But to do the vipassana, we have because we are connected with the world, external world, through our sense faculties, five uh, material sense faculties, and our mind. Do. We are taking different kind of objects. We are dealing with the objects. We are understanding. We are recognizing. We are realizing the world through these mind, uh, mind do and through these five uh, physical uh, sense doors. So we are taking different kind of objects. So we are understanding. We are taking ideas about the world, about ourselves, through these faculties, through these objects. So, uh, but we are dealing with these objects. Uh, we are the uh, through these uh, fac sense faculties in a wrong way. That's why we have a self attitude, self view, uh, some other bad views, and we are uh, like uh, we have the like Nietzsche film. They are they are permanent. Uh, we don't have that impermanence within ourselves. We we are thinking that they are all pleasurable, and we the, there is a self within ourselves. There is a self within uh, the others. So there is a there is we call there is a being that who is going uh, from life to life. Those kind of uh, like wrong views we have. That is why we are dealing with the objects in a wrong manner. So we are realizing, we are understanding the world, we are understanding the ourselves in a wrong manner. So that is why we are going to break this. To break this, we have to understand the objects in a proper way. That is why we are doing the contemplation. That is why we are doing the insight meditation. To do the insight meditation, we have to uh, like analyze these objects in the correct way. Let's take an example. Uh, like if you are given a statue, let's take a very ancient statue and you are asked to uh, do a research on this. Uh, you are asked to uh, write a technical paper or a thesis regards, with regards to this ancient statue. So what you have to do? To have, you have to understand, you have to get a proper understanding, uh, realization about this uh, statue. To, in order to uh, achieve that, you have to look at this statue in different angles from the top, from the bottom, from the like left view, from the right view, from the front view, back view. You have to uh, like uh, observe this statue in different angles. Otherwise, you will not can you cannot come to a conclusion, right conclusion with that statue. So you have to observe it thoroughly to write down a thesis or something. And the, uh, the one thing is you have to uh, observe in different angles. The second thing is you have to uh, spend more time with that statue. That is the second thing. Without uh, spending much time, a longer period with that statue, you cannot come to a, a strong conclusion. You cannot come to a right conclusion with that statue. By spending much time with a longer period with that statue and by observing that statue with different angles, you can come to a very good and a very a higher level of conclusion and you can write down the thesis or something. Uh, as per the example, we have to think about the objects. We have to observe, we have to analyze the objects we are taking from our sense faculties in a right way. You have to contemplate about those things because before you can before you start the inside meditation, you should have some knowledge. What are the namas? What are the rupas? Uh, that means what are the mentalities? What are the uh, uh, materialities? And what is nibbana? And what is the self view? Those kind. What is the sphere of uh, inside meditation? So these kind of things. What are the like? What are the functionalities of them? What are the characteristics of those realities? How many realities and what are the realities within ourselves? What is the realities out there in the world? So these kind of knowledge you have to gain before you start the inside meditation. By having uh, th that kind of a knowledge, you can start the inside meditation. Then you are contemplating about the objects you are taking from your through your sense faculties. That is the the function of the uh, the way of doing the vipassana inside meditation. Okay, now you know how to do the meditation. But to do the meditation, you have to deal with the objects. Through the objects, you are trying to contemplate because uh, based on your knowledge, you have gained uh, through the books or through the Dhamma talks from the teachers, 
you are trying to contemplate, you are trying to uh, like uh, utilize, use this knowledge practically with the objects. So to, to do that, to observe that object in a proper way, uh, as per the examples for the statue, you have to uh, be with the, you have to spend much time with that statue to get the correct view. And you have to uh, observe that statue in different angles. Likewise, to get the right understanding, correct understanding about the uh, object, you have to spend with the objects for a longer period. And the second thing is you have to observe that object, you have to analyze that object in different angles. There are uh, several ways to do the vipassana. There are several ways you can learn them in uh, you can learn them uh, later how to do the vipassana. There are several ways, several methods, but uh, out of them you can use several methods or one method to do the vipassana. Uh, but anyway, you have to uh, observe that, you have to look at that, you have to analyze that object to in different angles. Otherwise, you cannot have the correct proper understanding about that object. And you have to spend more time within that uh, same object. But what is our natural way? We are not mm, spending much time with each and every object. We are jumping one object to another in a very fast manner. We cannot be. Even though we try to spend, even, try, even though we are trying to be with one object for a longer period, at least few seconds, few minutes, we cannot do that. We cannot do, we cannot uh, be with that uh, object for a longer period. That is our natural way. Even though we try, we uh, go somewhere, very calm and quiet place and we try to focus on one object, we cannot do. That is a skill or ability, ability uh, to improve yourself. So now we know to have that uh, complete idea or the very uh, like uh, you, to get the observation thoroughly do the observation, you have to spend more time with the object and you have to observe that uh, object in different angles. But what is our natural way? We are not spending much time with every object because we are just moving from one object to another, then another. We are not spending much time with uh, each object. So that is a drawback and uh, that is the disadvantage within ourselves because we cannot perform that insight meditation, we cannot perform that vipassana in a correct way. So we are jumping from one to another. So we will uh, not, we have the chance to observe that object in different angle because we are not spending much time. So our vipassana will not be successful and uh, after a certain period of time you will be like uh, fed up with the uh, inside meditation. Sometimes you will give up the inside meditation because it is too difficult because you cannot spend much time with the object because your natural way is you are moving one object to another in a very fast manner. Frequently you are changing. So sometimes the, the even though without developing that skill to be with the object mm, uh, for a longer period without developing improving that ability the vipassana, the doing the uh, inside meditation would be very tough and you have to put much effort. It is very tiring and irritating. Sometimes you will give up that. You will fed up with the inside meditation. So if you give up the meditation, if you give up the practice, you will not come to the higher stages. Even uh, you cannot achieve one single vipassana knowledge or we call the insight knowledges uh, in the practice. So. Uh, we, we don't have to talk about the, the other higher noble paths. You cannot achieve those noble paths or you cannot achieve the ultimate liberation. So, uh, with, with our natural way, the vipassana will be a very tough one, very difficult one. You, are in, you have to face more inconveniences or the uh, un, uncomfortable situation with the inside meditation. What is the solution? The, the, the drawback or the disadvantage is we cannot be with the object for a longer period. That is the drawback or the disadvantage we have because our natural way is we are jumping one object to another. Then what, we, what, what would be the solution? We have to improve the time period 
we are spending, we are staying with object uh, with the time. If we can improve the time period, or the time gap we are spending with one object, then we will be able to observe that object in different angle uh, with our knowledge what we have gained based on the vipassana sphere, uh, based on the books or the teachers. Then we can apply, we can apply practically on the objects we are taking from our faculties because we ha now we have developed the skill or the ability to be with the object for a longer period. Sometimes it, it may be several minutes, several hours then you are eligible to perform uh, the vipassana or the insight meditation process on these objects. Now you are eligible and the, the thing is you are very uh, like uh, it is very convenient for you to, the, to perform that uh, vipassana uh, process. Let us take an example because uh, when, you when you are asked to cut a tree like without having a proper blade because of a proper blade in your axe or a knife. Let us take that kind of example that is a big tree and you are asked to uh, cut that tree by that uh, axe uh, that is not having a proper blade. So uh, you are trying to do that uh, task. You are what is your task is to cut the tree. What is your instrument? That axe or a knife uh, having the improper blade. It is not suitable. It is not eligible for that task. Now anyway you are asked so you are trying to do the uh, to perform the task. What would happen? The first drawback is uh, the task would be very uh, tiring because you, you have to put much effort because your blade is not enough, not suitable for that task. You have to put more effort, much effort and it is very tiring, you will feel tired uh, and anyhow you have to spend like hours, days to perform, to complete that task. What is the, ta the main objective is the, uh, to have some woods from the uh, tree. The task is to cut the tree. What is the instrument? That axe or a knife. But the first drawback is you have to put more effort, it is too difficult, uh, you will be tired and it is irritating. The second drawback is it will take more time. The first thing is you have to put more effort. And the second thing is you have to put, you have to spend more time with that task. That is also a drawback because you do not have the proper instrument to do, to perform that task. Those two drawbacks are there. That means uh, uh, you have to put, it is tiring. And the second thing is you have to put, you have to spend more time. Likewise, the vipassana is a task. What is our objective? To achieve the uh, four mangas, four noble paths or the ultimate liberation, nibbana. That is the final objective. What is the objective in the example? To have the woods, to have the woods to, to make a furniture. And the, what is the task in the example? Cutting the tree. What is the task within our practice is the doing the vipassana. And what is the object in the example? Is the axe or the knife. What is the object in our practice, in our task of doing vipassana? Our mind. Our mind is the instrument. By uh, using the mind instrument, you are performing the task of vipassana to achieve the final objective of nibbana. So what would happen if our instrument is not suitable for the task? Because uh, as per the example, uh, we did not have a proper instrument to perform the task. That is why we have to put more effort, uh, why it is tiring and why we had to spend more time. Likewise, in this vipassana task, in this uh, task of inside meditation, if you do not have a suitable or a proper instrument uh, within yourself, what is the instrument? The mind. If the mind is not proper in a suitable condition or an eligible condition to perform that vipassana task, the two drawbacks will be there. What are the two, two drawbacks? You have to put more effort, it is tiring, in, uh, it is not comfortable and it is irritating. Sometimes you will fed up and you will give up the uh, task. And the second thing is you have to 
uh, spend more time to do the inside meditation. By having a very long period, sometimes you may have not achieved even a single result, single vipassana knowledge within this practice. Then it is tiring, you will not be happy and sometimes you will fed up and you will give up the entire practice, entire inside meditation process. Then you will not achieve the ultimate objective. So, uh, this is the, these are the drawbacks uh, of not having a proper instrument, mind instrument within yourself. So, having the proper instrument, you will have two advantages. But is, what are the two advantages? You don't have to put much effort. It, the task would be very easier because uh, conveniently you can perform the task. That is the first advantage. If you have the mind, uh, mind instrument is in the proper condition, you don't have to spend much time. You don't have to wait for a longer period because within a short period, you can perform the inside meditation and can, and can achieve can experience some results, some inside knowledges and sometimes the uh, noble paths even you can achieve uh, with a short period. Because what is the reason? You are performing the task with a proper or a suitable instrument. What is the instrument? The mind instrument. So, uh, so likewise, you have to understand to achieve the ultimate object, you have to perform the task uh, without much effort without spending much time in order to achieve those two advantages you have to have uh, like the proper mind instrument or a uh, instrument which is in the suitable condition how we our instrument is mind how we can uh, prepare our mind uh, how we can uh, make our mind a proper instrument by uh, doing the samatha by developing the concentration why as i said earlier the vipassana is like uh, understanding or we are observing analyzing the objects with our knowledge what we have gained about the vipassana sphere so we have to apply those within our inside meditation so to do that task to perform that task we have to uh, spend more time we have to spend much time with the object so otherwise we will not be have we will not be having uh, the proper understanding about the object then still we are in a bad or the wrong view about this object with our self view or something and uh, uh, to perform that vipassana in a correct way in an effective and efficient way we have to uh, develop that ability to spend to be with the object for a longer period that is how we make our mind instrument in a, to become a proper one. That is how we uh, make our mind instrument uh, to a suitable condition to perform that vipassana task. So that to achieve that objective, we have to develop the concentration because our main uh, to perform the task in a very effective and efficient way, you have to be with, you have to spend much time with the object. To uh, develop that skill or the ability, you have to develop the concentration. You have to uh, develop the concentration by uh, developing the tranquility, by developing the samatha. That is why the importance of the chitta visuddhi. That is why the after the Sila Visuddhi, the first stage of the Sapta Visuddhi, the purification of after completing the Sila Visuddhi, after completing the purification of the moral virtue, then you have to perform, you have to achieve the results of the Chitta Visuddhi, the purification of the mind. That is Buddha, that is why Buddha admonished to perform this second level, the second segment before you go to the Vipassana. That is the importance of the developing of mind, developing or developing the skill or the ability of uh, uh, to be with the object for a longer period. That is the importance of the concentration. Now you can understand why in between the sila, the morality, and in between in between sila and the vipassana, uh, why this chitta visuddhi or the purification of mind is included by the Buddha himself and why we have to perform that. 
why we have to develop the concentration. Chitta Visuddhi, the purification of the mind or the concentration is the result. Developing is a different thing and the development or the purification level is a uh, different thing. Uh, after having a purification, certain level of purification of the seal, moral virtue, uh, I said you can uh, come to the next stage that is the to develop the mind, to develop the concentration. In order to that, you can take whatever the meditation object and uh, uh, based on the advice of the proper teacher, you can perform, you can develop the concentration. What is the concentration? The ability or the skill to be with one object for a longer period. Then you are practicing the any kind of a medita meditative object and you develop the concentration. You develop the like the function of the ekagata, one pointedness. Then after having a certain period of timing with much effort, you are focusing on one object for a longer period, then your ability, the skill will be developed. After some periods, uh, it may be weeks, months, years, you can achieve the uh, excess concentration. We call the upachara samadhi, upachara samadhi. And after that, you can strengthen the jananga. We call the vitakka vichara piti sukha ekagata. Vitakka is the initial, initial application. And the vichara means the sustained application. And the uh, vichakka, vitakka vichara piti is the rapture. Sukha is the pleasure. And the ekagata is the one-pointedness. So we have developed the ekagata, one-pointedness to achieve the uh, concentration to achieve the ability or the skill uh, to be with the object for a longer period uh, because uh, because you have to develop the concentration to perform to make the mind uh, to become a proper instrument to perform the vipassana process or the vipassana task in order to achieve the ultimate object of having the four noble paths that is the inter interrelationship between these seven segments in the sevenfold purification path or this sila, samadhi and panya. This is the morality, concentration and the wisdom. You have to understand briefly about this practice very well. Otherwise, you cannot understand the progressive levels, progressive way and what to do, to which extent I have to spend for this uh, part or the segment you should have a proper uh, understanding. So when we talk about the concentration, uh, usually in our natural ways, we, are not, we don't have that ability. We don't have that skill to be with uh, one object for a longer period. That's why the vipassana is also very difficult for us because we are trying to focus on one object. Uh, within a few seconds, we are, the object will be changed without our intention, without our effort. It is, it, it is uh, happen naturally. So, we cannot be with that object. Uh, that is why we need to improve the concentration. So naturally, we don't have concentration. We have to improve it. It will take much time. It will, you have to put much effort. Otherwise, you cannot develop that uh, concentration. Even not having the concentration, you can perform the vipassana. Uh, we cannot say without having any upachara samadhi, without having any jhana samadhi, uh, you cannot perform. It is impossible to uh, have in the vipassana. You can perform, but you have to understand, you have to keep in your mind that there are two drawbacks, disadvantages. What are them? You have to put more effort without the concentration. The, your mind is not eligible, suitable for that task. You have to put more effort. It will be very tiring. It would be very uncomfortable, inconvenient for you. Sometimes you will be fed up. You will give up the uh, entire process. And the second disadvantage is you have to spend more time, you have to put uh, more effort for a longer period in order to achieve a small result from this vipassana uh, process, to achieve a single knowledge of vipassana, inside knowledge. Sometimes uh, after spending a, a longer period, sometimes you may not achieve single achievement, single vipassana knowledge, inside knowledge uh, after having these kind of process yeah, then you will be uh, end up with the uh, like uh, uh, giving up the entire process 
so you can perform vipassana but you have to keep you have to think about these drawbacks sometimes it will be very tiring but what would happen to a person after developing that skill after developing the concentration if he is going to uh, do the vipassana it would be very easy for him because now he has developed the concentration his mind or the mind instrument is eligible suitable to perform the vipassana task in without putting much effort and without spending much time those uh, advantages will be there so you have to think about uh, why we have to develop concentration to a certain extent there are uh, the different levels you can uh, do the concentration and come to the uh, vipassana knowledge the first thing is you can do without uh, having any concentration development of the concentration you can perform vipassana so that is the first way uh, but you have to think about you have to understand the two disadvantage disadvantages are there you have to put much effort and you have to spend more time uh, the second way is you can perform you can uh, like develop the concentration to a certain level to a certain extent but you have not achieved uh, access concentration no absorption level no upachar samadhi no jhana levels but uh, but you can feel that you can spend uh, some uh, time with the objects uh, but you have not achieved upachar or jhana but then uh, but you can uh, perform you can uh, move to the vipassana process and by simultaneously mutually you can do uh, vipassana and uh, samatha the insight meditation and uh, developing the tranquility uh, simultaneously then sometimes you can develop the vipassana as well as the tranquility and you can develop the both uh, stages both levels that can also possible because as the present situation as when we compare with the uh, present situation of the people uh, present situation of the uh, level of the wisdom the, the, this would be the most suitable way because having a certain level of concentration you can move to the vipassana inside meditation and you can perform both of them simultaneously you can uh, develop the both concentration and the vipassana knowledge uh, at the same time uh, we call the yuganadda bhavana uh, because we are we are doing the both at the same time the third level is you can you can develop the concentration to a higher level you can achieve upachara samadhi that means access absorb action uh, concentration or you can develop jhana level we call the absorption level the patama jhana the first level of the uh, absorption the second level of absorption likewise you can develop the all the jhanas all the rupa avachara jhanas all the arupa avachara jhanas you can develop those thing at least you can have one jhana then your purification of the mind would be very high so you can easily move to the vipassana knowledge but uh, developing the concentration uh, up to a jhana level would be a very tough one it will take a longer period uh, the third level is you can achieve one level of jhana one concentration level of absorption and you can move to the vipassana meditation that is a third level you can choose whatever the uh, method but most suitable level is you without having jhana or without having excess uh, concentration you can have some certain level of concentration and you can move to the vipassana you can perform the vipassana task vipassana process and at the same time you can develop the uh concentration or the tranquility within yourself that would be the most suitable method uh, for the uh, today's uh, like uh, practitioners likewise you have to select what is most suitable for you anyway uh, our natural way i said earlier our natural way is we don't have concentration usually we are jumping one object to another uh, very frequently very in a very speed manner we cannot be with one object for a longer period that is why uh, we cannot perform the vipassana effectively and efficiently that is why we need concentration uh, this happen this natural way uh, is happening within ourselves because we cannot be with one object because uh, we are 
uh, affected by the hindrances, mainly the hindrances, all the, some other defilements are there, but mainly we are talking about in the Samatha uh, meditation, we are talking about the hindrances. What are those hindrances? Uh, the, what, the first one is Kama Chanda, the uh, sensual uh, desire, Kama Chanda, and the Vyapada Nivarana, that is the uh, ill will. And the third one is the Tinamidda, and the sloth and the drowsiness. And the fourth one is the Uddacha Kukkucha, that is the restlessness and the anxiety. And the fifth one, the last uh, Nivarana is the Vichikicca uh, Nivarana, the, the what is called the doubt or the uncertainty. Those five hindrances affecting our mind because of those uh, effects our mind cannot be with one object for a longer period. We are trying to move from one object to another because of the effect of these five hindrances. So, by uh, to develop the hindrances, uh, to develop the concentration, we have to suppress these hindrances. Why they are called Nivarana? They are covering, they are covering all our wholesome deeds. That means, uh, what we have not achieved, the jhanas, the noble paths, these kind of things are covered by these five hindrances. In Pali, that is why they are called nivarana. These five nivaranas are covering the upcoming uh, good things, upcoming kusalas like jhanas, absorption, or the maggas, these noble paths, uh, because of their effect. That is why we have to suppress them. Without suppressing these five hindrances, Kama Chanda, Vyapada, Thinamidda, Udacha, Kukkucha and Vichikicca, without suppressing those five hindrances, we can never achieve the absorptions. We can never achieve the, uh, the higher levels, higher results of the Vipassana. Those are the four noble paths. We cannot achieve. So, the initial stage is to develop the mind, we have to suppress them in order to have the jhanas or the maggas. So, that is why we need to develop the concentration to, to suppress the hindrances. In the level of the upachara samadhi, these five hindrances are suppressed. We call the vikambana prahan. This is, a, a, they will be suppressed for a certain period of time. They will not emerge in our mind. They will come to they will even not come to the surface level, a rising stage in our mind if we have a upachara samadhi. Then we are, we, we will have five mental factors, the strong five mental factors in the upachara samadhi because we call the vitakka, the initial application and the vichara, the uh, what you call the sustain application, uh, piti, the rupture and the sukha, we call the pleasure, and the ekagata, one-pointedness. That is, within this, if you have achieved the upachara samadhi, the excess concentration, these five mental factors are very powerful. That is, by the vitakka, by the uh, initial application, you are like uh, suppressing, you are eliminating the, uh, you are eliminating the thina midda nivarana. <clears throat> that is the sloth and the drowsiness is eliminated by the vitakka, uh, by, the, uh, uh, by the initial application, which are by developing, by <clears throat> having a powerful level, powerful condition of this vichara, this is a sustained application. By the sustained application, by the vichara, the what do you call, the vichikicca is suppressed, vichikicca is the doubt or the uncertainty. By the, by the vichara, by the sustained application, we call them jhanangas. Uh, by the uh, sustained application, by the uh, vichara jhananga, the nivarana, the doubt, uh, doubt hindrance, uh, the doubt is uh, suppressed. It is eliminated for a longer period. It will not even emerge within the mind. Then the third one is the vitakka vichara piti. Piti is the rupture. By the rupture, jhananga, 
the vyapha the the ill will ill ill will will be suppressed and the fourth one the sukha we call the pleasure by the pleasure uh, the udacha kukkucha nivarana we call the restlessness and the anxiety is suppressed and uh, by the ekagata the kama chanda nivarana by the one pointedness mental factor the kama chanda nivarana the sensual desire is suppressed by having by developing these kind of these uh, for uh, five mental factors we call the vitakka vichara piti sukha ekagata we are uh, suppressing we are suppressing the five hindrances by uh, one of them by each of them uh, all the five hindrances will be suppressed then after having the upachara samadhi then these hindrances will not come to the sur- even the surface of the mind they are suppressed suppressed and uh furthermore you ha- you have to strengthen uh, these five mental factors vitakka vichara piti sukha ekagata and you will achieve the absorption level then uh, we call the jhana levels then the you are uh, these jhanangas vitakka vichara piti sukha ekagata will be more powerful and the five hindrances will not be come to the surface of the mind for a longer period and you can focus on one object for a longer period without coming uh, without having a different single object within that period of time when you have achieved that jhana level or the absorption levels you are eligible your mind is very calm because you have already uh, suppressed these uh, the sensual desire kama chanda nivarana ill will the vyapada nivarana uh, sloth and the drowsiness tinamidda nivarana restlessness and the anxiety uddacha kukkucha nivarana and the uh, vichikicha nivarana the doubt or the uncertainty so these because of the effect of these hindrances that is why we cannot be with one object naturally we are with those five hindrances that is why we cannot be with one object for a longer period by developing by uh, strengthening these five mental factors vitakka vichara piti sukha ekagata we are suppressing those five hindrances and achieve the excess concentration and achieve the absorption levels jhanas then we are suppressing for a longer period uh, if you are with the jhana if you have that ability to uh, come to the samapatti to achieve the jhana after uh, having that level you can your mind is very calm because these all the nivaranas all the nivaranas are suppressed and you can be with one object for a longer period and you can your mind is a suitable instrument to perform the vipassana task then uh, then you will have two advantages Uh, because you are eligible your mind is suitable instru- mind has become a suitable instrument for the vipassana task then you can uh, easily do the vipassana task the insight meditation without putting much effort without less effort you can do uh, you can perform the vipassana process and also you don't have to uh, wait for a longer period with the shorter period you can develop the vipassana you can achieve some levels of insight knowledge we call the vipassana jnana sometimes within a certain period of time uh, if you are doing uh, vipassana effortfully in the correct way uh, with uh, having uh, proper advices from a teacher then sometimes you may uh, have that eligibility to achieve the four mangas and achieve the ultimate liberation that is the path if we can uh, if we uh, try to uh, understand briefly so today we have discussed about the virtue what is the uh, sila visuddhi what is the importance of the virtue what is the importance of the moral virtue and to which level we have to improve this kind of a moral virtue and then uh, what is the next step we have to develop the uh concentration that is a second level the purification of the mind we call the chitta visuddhi and what is the concentration we have elaborated discussed and why it is important why we have to uh, develop 
uh, the concentration, what is the interrelation between the first stage, the purification of the moral virtue and the purification of the mind. And why we need uh, this concentration for the upcoming higher levels, we call the uh, vipassana levels. The, uh, so sila, apart from the Sila Visuddhi and Chitta Visuddhi, all the other five parts are related with the Vipassana. The uh, last one is related with the noble parts. The, the middle four segments are completely dedicated for the Vipassana. So for doing, to perform that Vipassana, uh, this uh, why this concentration or having the level of purification of the mind is so important. So, and how we perform the vipassana task and achieve the four maggas uh, and the achieve the uh, ultimate liberation. That is how what we have discussed so far uh, within this Dhamma discourse and I hope you have uh, got a certain level of understanding about the virtue, concentration and vipassana, how they are interrelated, how we have to perform them and what are the importance of them. So I'm going to conclude the uh, Dhamma talk by giving this uh, summary and uh, I'm very happy to have this Dhamma discourse with you, uh, this kind of explanation and hope to have uh, another discourse in next month and uh, I, would, uh, I would like to uh, say that we have uh, accumulated a very uh, important, very powerful merits by having this uh, Dhamma discourse, you have listened to Dhamma, you have uh, maintained your mind in a, a proper way, we call the Yoniso Manasikara. So these are very powerful merits. So I would like to uh, send these kind of merits to our parents, to our Dhamma teachers who are teaching us the Dhamma and may they attain the ultimate Nibbana as they are uh, expecting. And also, we, uh, it is very important to send these kind of uh, uh, merits uh, for the rela relatives and the friends who have passed away and who are expecting these kind of merits. May they receive these important and the very powerful merits and uh, may they have very peaceful and pressurable lives and they may, at may they attain uh, ultimate Libbana as they are wish and may they achieve all the paths and the fruition. And also I would like to wish all of you, uh, may you all have a very good uh, physical and mental health and uh, uh, because this merits we have what we have at accumulated within this Dhamma discourse uh, may be a great cause, very powerful cause uh, to, uh, to uh, come through all the wishes within your mind, all the good wills and uh, may you have a, a long life and may you have a, a pleasurable and desirable life after this and may, this, may, may these merits be helpful to achieve the ultimate Libbana, all the paths, all the noble paths and fruitions as you wish. And I would like to <coughs> and uh, may all the blessings of the Triple Gems with you and I am going to conclude and thank you everyone.